Hi, it's Corrine for the Cut at Home Design Team, and today I'm making a Parisian themed card. I'm showing you some of the products that I will be using today. For my card base, I'm using a black piece of cardstock cut to 11 by 5, scored in half at 5.5. That'll give me a 5.5 by 5 card. I have two pieces of this beautiful Parisian themed paper from Knitwit Collections. My mats are cut to five and three eighths by four and seven eighths and five and a quarter by four and three quarters. I have this piece of foil paper. I'm using this adorable die from Cut at Home. It's by Cottage Cuts and it's the Eiffel Tower die. I'm also using a Spellbinders Nest Abilities die. This is label 17. And again, I'll have links to all these products on Cut at Home's blog along with all the measurements. So I cut out a frame using the largest and second largest die. And I'm also using some black soot distress ink and a mini ink blending tool to go around the edges of my pattern paper. And I'm using a piece of the Heartfelt Creations clear cardstock. It comes in 12 by 12 or eight and a half by 11. So the first thing I'm doing is edging my pattern paper in the black soot. I'm cutting a piece to go behind one of the mats, which you'll see it'll make more sense in a moment, but I wanted a little more stability to my mat. So I'm just cutting that down to the same size. And eventually I do cut this piece down a tiny bit more. So I'm measuring the center of my paper so I can align my die. And I'm using the second largest from that die and just again centering it, getting it where I want, and I'm adding a piece of scotch tape to hold it in place while I run it through my Sizzix Big Shot. And I will be using the outside frame for the card. And now I'm going to use this foil paper along with a precision base plate from Sizzix. This base plate, if you have an intricate die, really helps to cut out your die. So again, I'm just placing it in there. I'm running it through. I will switch it around and run it back through again. If you switch it around and run it through, you can really get a great cut and it has a lot of intricate pieces and it just comes out beautifully. So I think I ran it through three times here, back and forth. And now I can simply pop out all the little tiny pieces in the Eiffel Tower. This only took me a moment to do. And that's pretty thick paper, it's a foil. So I'm going to place down my first mat. I'm going to use some angel craft tape in the one quarter inch. I'm getting that centered and adhering that down. And now I'm going to adhere this piece to my black mat piece, but I wanted it to cut the same frame. So I just use the outside piece as a guide and then that way it fits perfectly behind there. And like I said, I did that just so it, it's a little bit more sturdy. I'm just eyeballing some of the clear cardstock and I will adhere that behind my paper once I glue my pattern paper to my frame. Or I guess I did it the other way around. I adhered my clear cardstock first. Again, using some angel craft tape, I wanted to use something strong. And now I will just adhere those two together. This I'm using ATG tape. It didn't need to be as strong and I can roll the tape back when it came to the bracket pieces. So for the little lamp post that comes in it, I'm adding a white piece of cardstock behind it and using some wet glue to adhere down my frame to finish off the front. And here's where I decided to add a little bit extra on the bottom and side. So I cut it down just slightly off camera. And now I'm just kind of placing my pieces behind my window to decide where I want to situate them. I did mark them with a pencil and now I am gluing them down. I like to use a scrap piece of paper to go over it and really press it down. That way if any glue seeps out, it seeps out onto the paper and I don't get it all over my fingers and back onto my card. So again, I'm just kind of put, putting that into position, finding out where I want it and then adhering it down. I'm using some tweezer bee tweezers to help me hold it in place. That helps when you're using smaller objects. And now this little piece I cut from the foil, I'm using a pen to write bonjour in it and then wiping away the pen. So it just basically debossed that foil. And I'll add that to the center of my sign, my hanging sign. 
again, really pressing it down to make sure it's adhered well. And now I'm going to turn this into a shaker card, and that's the whole reason I use the clear. So I'm using some 3M foam tape, and I will add that around the entire perimeter of my clear card stock. I did cut out some flowers that match that paper collection from my Cameo. It comes in that collection, so I'm adding them around using some wet glue and pop dots on some of them. That really looks so pretty um, on the finished card, having some of them popped up and some straight down on the card. I added them, as you can see, around the Eiffel Tower. Again, just seeing how it looks and if I was happy with it. And now I'm going to add my sequins and use some glossy accents to adhere some of the sequins down. That way, even when the rest fall down, I have a few going around the card. And I do the exact same thing with some flat back pearls. I add a few pearls throughout. I just think ivory pearls with this paper is gorgeous together. They are self-adhesive pearls, but I still like to add glossy accents to make sure that they definitely will not move. So now I just simply press down my paper or my foam, and now I'm adding some Wild Orchid Craft Flowers to both the bottom right and the top left corners. I will add a few hip rosebuds as well. I'm using hot glue. And I can glue right on that clear paper. That's a very thick paper by Heartfelt Creations. It's much thicker than you would see the transparency paper that you normally see. That's very thin. This is a very thick paper, so I'm actually gluing it directly on there. And now I'm going to use my heat gun and go over where I glued on the flowers. It'll get rid of any hot glue strings. So I'm going to use that negative piece. That paper is so pretty and it matches so well. I will adhere that down and I can either add a white mat to the top of it for my sentiment or I can just use a thick black marker and it'll show well. So I just used over the leftover pieces, the poodle and the lamp post, and that's all there was to it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and stop by Cut at Home's blog. I'll have all the measurements listed along with all the products used. Thanks so much for watching.